Perfect. Here's what we think we're talking about today, and you guys can jump in if you want to talk about something different. But we want to talk about social media monitoring and reputation monitoring, how that's really the start of your social media thinking. We want to talk about the difference between business to business and business to consumer, and maybe whether there is a difference or not. We want to talk about how you can integrate this into your overall marketing plan, and how to develop a strategy for that outbound communication once you get to that stage. Still sound good? All right, nobody wants to You know, so some questions we get when you start talking about this stuff, and then we're going to see some better questions in a minute. You know, isn't it fun to deal with a more informed consumer in all your businesses? Yes, no, some of both. You know, it's, it's, it is and it isn't, you know, and we'll talk through more of that, but you're, there's no getting around the fact that, generally speaking, we are dealing with a more informed consumer for all the good and bad that comes with. Um, is social media a marketing function or a customer support function or several different functions all rolled together? 
we should have had this discussion when your websites all went up 10 years ago. Some of you worked out whether this is that function or this function. Some of you might not have. But and is that, is that still different today than the discussions you had around your site? Um, but again, we are, you know, if you're a B2B business, how can social media help us? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about if we need a direct consumer strategy and where do we get started? These are some questions that usually get fed in these kind of presentations. Some better questions that we like to bring to the table is what we said earlier. What if you knew what your customers were thinking? What if you could get feedback when you need it? And it's inexpensive. Let's, go, let's talk about focus groups. How many of you have been a part of a focus group? Had to one for Focus groups. All right, maybe like 25 people. Now, this completely uh, scale with one over a gap. We can talk to thousands of people. So it's, it, it's a different ball. Um, can you get your customers to be your admin? deals with the third bullet point. Can you get them talking about your brand? Can you get your competitors talking about it? Because you're doing something interesting. Ooh, I so, Bring this way. so, you know, again, if we leave you with about two or three points today, this is one of them. So, you know, and again, I know some of you guys in the room are professional marketers in this space, so some of this isn't a shock to some of you guys, but I think some of you may be we, this is not where a lot of people want to start. So when we start talking about social media with people, the immediate question we get is, so what am I going to tweet about? What am I going to post on my Facebook page? What am I going to do these things? And we want to back people up and talk about a little more strategy. We want to talk about your overall plan to communicate with your customers, partners, whoever it is you're trying to communicate with. And so for us, social media really starts in the middle with monitoring. And you can call it reputation monitoring or social media monitoring, whatever word you want to use. But if, I, if, I, if you make me pick what you're going to spend resources on, I'll tell you every time, spend your resources setting up keywords alert and keyword alerts and monitoring and finding out what conversation is happening about you, your competitors, your products, your industry, before you start contributing to the conversation. You're going to benefit a lot more there, especially because this can help you influence the next step. So the next ring is really participating in your standard, standard social networks that you're, we're going to talk about. LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. You might get to the next ring of talking about industry-specific activities that you want to be in, discussion forums, et cetera, that might revolve around your particular industry. But you just can't argue with the numbers of the Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and those kind of things that you shouldn't be there. Just from a volume and quantity perspective, it's hard to compete with any industry-specific chat rooms, forum, et cetera. Again, it's not that you don't want to monitor those over here, but as far as your participation, you're just walking with a really big stick in these to get to a lot of people really fast. But again, this is the ring we see people skip. I could write strategy in that ring as well, but thinking about the strategy that you want to go forth with and starting by listening is really the first, is the thing that we see people skip all the time. We'll talk a little bit more about how to do that. This is uh, something to, something to As far as developing strategy, so again, here's the list. We're going to come back to this list several, several times. In developing a strategy around social media, again, listen first, do that monitoring, think about your, oh yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that, I want to set up a little bit here. Rookie mistake, you can do the clicker. Okay. <laughs> it is a laser pointer and a clicker, this is going to be bad. But, um, so again, what we're going to go through here is listening first, we'll talk about thinking about your audience, determining goals, <laughs> and get down to um, the voice you're going to use and publishing out to the world. So, but let's go into the first one, which is on that reputation monitoring now. Um, go ahead and use Yeah, I'm sure. Totally sure. So again, how many of you guys have keyword alerts set up on your company name in Google? That's usually about, about a third and a half, right? That's how many of you pay attention to them? Yeah, come on. How many of you do anyway? Okay. okay. Honest. So again, all this stuff, I don't want to put myself out of business and Jason will do the same thing, but unfortunately or fortunately, a lot of these things you can do yourselves. It's just whether you're gonna have the expertise to do it, the time to do it and just the attention to it. But Google Alerts, Keyword Alerts is the, if you, again, if you take one or two things home today, you can go to your computer at night, set up Keyword Alerts on your business, set them up on your name, set them up on your products. You can set it so you receive those alerts as things happen or once a day if it gets overwhelming. But you know, a lot of the programs that we use are just more sophisticated versions of that, but that's a good place to start. And there's, we've benefited a lot from finding that people are talking about you know, spinistry or something else in different ways. We can tell some of those fun stories later if we have time. But we've definitely benefited. We've seen our clients benefit from just having that monitoring in place. It's simple and easy to do. Um, 
You want to look for both positive and negative impressions and not ignore one or the other. Everybody jumps to, oh my gosh, it's going to be all this negative stuff, and I have to deal with it. And that's true. You guys can still come in. But, um, come on. It's okay. We're coming, Mike. I knew it would be you. Um, so, and then, but certainly you don't want to ignore positive impressions out there because, as Jason said, with those advocates, taking somebody who likes you guys or made a positive comment, turning them into somebody, a little minor celebrity that made a nice comment about you, if you retweet them and they think that's really cool, they'll do it again. So don't ignore the positive stuff. And again, as I said there, start with Google keyword alerts and then work towards more sophisticated tools. And to just lean back on the name. I know as companies we never do anything wrong, everything is always right. <laughs> However, if one person says and complains to repeats this late, there's a big difference between one and 300 people complaining the pieces are late. You might want to do something about it. True. So don't ignore that. So the next step after you've done some listening is thinking about your audience and developing a strategy. So we talk all the time about companies that look at your business internally with your terminology and your different lines. So let's say you have three different product lines that you're supporting. You might think, I want to go set up three different Facebook pages or such, one along each product line. And that's interesting, and maybe you want to do that versus doing nothing. But isn't it more interesting if your products say, support the busy mom, or the dad that can't cook, or the poor college kid, or different examples like that. If you develop a Facebook channel with that person, that persona in mind, it's a lot easier to get passion around that. It's a lot easier to tweet other things or put Facebook posts out there about things that that consumer group would be interested in that don't sound salesy and don't make it so you're always just showing product information on their face. If you do things down brand lines and product lines as opposed to who those things appeal to, it's just a lot harder to feel organic and, and, and personal communication lines with the people. So determine your goals relates to that and what do you want to get out of this. So let's go to the, the next one. Go ahead. Um, once you figure out your goals of communicating with people, it could be to you know increase customer loyalty, it could be to get new product exposure, it could be a lot of different things. One of the things that's going to happen when you start going out there and putting anything out there is you're going to have to be ready to deal with customer reactions. And this can happen, I guess, whether or not you're participating or not. Again, if you're doing that monitoring, people could be making comments, whether it's on your Facebook page or on the news is comment string and there's stories that might be about you or about somebody else in your industry. So you have to develop some rules of engagement. If you've worked with PR firms or you've just in your customer service area developed rules of uh, engagement and how you're gonna react to different customer things that happen, you could probably adapt those to social media. If you haven't thought through those things because you haven't connected directly with your customers very much in the past, you really have to go back to some of those basics and think some of those engagement thoughts through. So some of the starter questions you know, as Jason said, there's a difference between one person and 300 people commenting about you. Don't get freaked out. So how, you know, I won't make you raise your hands because you're going to raise your hands. You freak out more when the one person calls in with a problem and you don't think about the 200 people that navigated your website correctly today and didn't have any issue. And you go changing the site for the one person, right? You got to think about whether it's a significant number of people that you're dealing with and complaining. So same thing there. If somebody is complaining on a blog, are they a popular commenter? Is it a popular blog? You don't want to ignore it, but you want your reaction to scale correctly to the person that's out there. Um, is the comment they're making a statement of fact that you can get in and correct? You don't want to get into an Apple, PC, Coke, Pepsi, religious debate with people if you can help it. You just, you know, if they say it always takes eight weeks for them to deliver their product, actually, sir, our average time is four weeks. We're very sorry you experienced something different. Get out. Don't worry if he's calling you names or doing anything. Don't get into a pissing match about that stuff, you know, it's like just correct the statement back and get out. There could be a lot of different rules you develop, and these are probably different, you know, depending on your company and who you're trying to deal with, but think about those before crisis time. I think, you know, again, if you talk to any PR professional, they're going to tell you the same thing. Think about those before you need to. Right. And so, again, we've thought about, we've done some monitoring, we've thought about who our audience is, we've developed some goals, we've thought about the rules of engagement. Now we got to think about getting some information out to people if we're going to have an outbound strategy. So, hey, you're back. <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm away. Uh, proactive communication. Um, people get scared now because you're talking directly with the phone. And they always say, well, what the hell are we going to say? What are you saying right now? What are you saying on your website? What are you saying to your suppliers? How are you talking to them? 
it's no different. Now, like I just said, we'll go back to scale. We're dealing with a bigger scale. So don't let masses, you know, scare you off from doing it. But you have to be proactive.